conversations took place and this perceived fear uh, by some people in certain countries that the police judiciary operate at different levels and different standards in the Mediterranean. And this sort of cliche kind of thing, ah, they're not going to do as good a job. Was that borne out in the first investigation? The, the early investigation was, was marred by numerous things. It wasn't just that the Portuguese operation was, was inefficient. The, the first responders were the, the local beat cops, and, and they're, they arrived at the scene on the assumption that a child was missing. And so their first priority, um, mistakenly from a policing point of view, was to join in the search. What they should have done immediately was to seal off the McCann's apartment as a potential crime scene. They didn't do that. And instead, they participated in the search with lots of goodwill and lots of energy for a couple of hours before the what we would call the sort of serious police squad, the, the PJ, um, which is a different, a different police agency in, in Portugal, before their, their inspectors arrived. And when those inspectors arrived, they were horrified because by that time, the crime scene was, uh, you know, d disastrously overrun. People had been in and out. Um, uh, dogs. Had, search dogs yeah. had been in and out. Um, it, it, you know, Mr. It was a mess. It, it was a mess. mess. It was a mess. Absolutely, it was yeah. a mess. And, and they were, they were, they were appalled. It's so, called the gold. Sorry to interrupt you, Tony. It, it, it's called by the police in, in the UK certainly the golden hour. The hour after the police arrive, after a, an apparent crime has been committed or a tragedy seems to have happened, that first hour is the golden hour. And it, during the golden hour, the golden hour becomes golden if you've sealed the scene and can really look at the evidence. And there was no opportunity to, to, to do that in, in, in this mess. One of the things that has come up, Robin, consistently is uh, the issue of the dogs and the DNA and uh, we have a quick clip here of ex-Scotland Yard policeman Colin Sutton talking about numerous agencies competing with each other on the case and how this may have caused the problem. We're going to explore this whole issue of the dogs and the DNA just after this clip and uh, back straight after the break. Sean was like an episode of Columbo this morning. Um, we remember Columbo, do we, Anthony? We do. You're old enough to remember Columbo. I could pretend not to be. <laughs> uh, in terms of the dogs, um, how do you rate that evidence? Well, look, um, these these police dogs of varying types, um, search dogs, uh, ER. Um, and for people dogs. that haven't seen the documentary, what did they find or allegedly found? Uh, well, the dogs, an advanced victim recovery dog, better known as a cadaver dog, and a blood dog, both alerted to various points in the McCann's holiday apartment. And in the rental car, the McCanns had rented four or five weeks after Madeline's disappearance and to some bits of clothing in their holiday villa. Now, I'm not going to get more specific than that. If people want to know the specifics, please have a look at our book or please watch the documentary because this is such a contentious area and I don't want to spend too much time explaining every little bit. I understand. Anna, you're right, because even in the documentary, it takes a good it, half it an hour just to go into it. So we, we don't have time to do that now, right. but... The bottom line here is that these kind of dogs are viewed as an investigative tool. The documentary presents the first ever on-screen interview with the handler who was dealing with those dogs, Martin Grime. We present in our book the first evidence of what he actually said at the time, which was, if my dogs find something, if they alert, it is not considered evidence. If they seem to find something. If they alert, it is not evidence unless actual corroborating physical evidence is found. And in this case, no corroborating physical evidence was found. The police went back, having the dog alerts having taken place, they went back and they lifted a variety of samples from the locations where the dogs had alerted. Those samples were not recovered in a way that made it possible to determine what substance had left them. With DNA, we talk about uh, a fingerprint can have 
some skin cells in it. We talk about saliva, we talk about blood, we talk about semen. We talk about other bodily fluids, a fingernail, a strand of hair with a follicle. There are specific things that you can retrieve DNA from. The samples in this case were so minute that the way they retrieved the DNA, it was impossible to determine what substance had been found. The bottom line is that the Forensic Science Service determined that A, there was no way of determining whether or not there was blood in any of those samples. To the best of their knowledge, there was no blood recovered. And if you read the actual scientific reports, no blood was found in this apartment. And if you read the actual scientific evidence, the DNA of Madeline McCann was never recovered from this apartment. Let me add that. The reports that out of a possible match, they had an 80% match, or they had 15 out of 19. That isn't the way DNA works, folks. You have a match, you don't have a match. The DNA that was presented was degraded, it was mixed, it was shown to have come from more than one person, possibly as many as three people. There are commonalities between Madeline's DNA and the DNA of many other human beings, but most importantly, Madeline's DNA comes from her two parents. So it, many aspects of her DNA are shared by each of her parents. They are also shared by her twin siblings. So even having found DNA that was like Madeline's wouldn't help the case. It would only be helped if they found Madeline's specific DNA. Anthony. I want you to talk in a second about um, the former lead investigator on the case, Paolo Pereira, Chris Dovo. Um, we have a little clip here of uh, Madeline, regarding Madeline asking her parents where they'd been the night before and his theory that she may have been left the apartment herself looking for them. And that brings in some people questioning would or was sedation probably uh, in any way involved in this matter. So we're going to deal with that shortly after this quick clip of Paolo Pereira and uh, a short ad break. We're going to stay with this till 11 o'clock because this is a fascinating topic. Urgently or otherwise wandered from the apartment. Well, it's one of the possibilities. I said earlier that the big problem with the case is that there is just no physical evidence or none that we know about yet as, as to what happened. And there are three possibilities. One maybe you should, one should think about first, which is the simple explanation that a little child just short of four, when, when, you, when, when you're about to have your fourth birthday, you're very grown up, and that she might have wandered out of the flat, leaving her two baby siblings behind, just to go and, and show her mum, and to go and find mum and dad who were sitting near the swimming pool outside, where, where, and she knew that that's where they are at their dinner. But she might have wandered out into the half dark. It wasn't quite pitch dark yet. And got lost. Uh, now that's one suggestion, but also, and I think the, the brighter one, is that the town was riddled with trenches at the time that were being dug to repair the sewer system and the water system. That the little thing could have wandered out and fallen into one of these trenches, into one, and then maybe into one of the pipes, and maybe being covered up early in the morning by the workmen. What do you but think of those I, theories? I, well, I thought it because it's a human explanation. I thought it was perhaps the explanation at one point, but on balance, because of the other things we learned, um, I, I don't espouse that theory. What I lean to, and I think we both lean to now, um, is. Um, which we couldn't have known and the p police didn't know at the beginning, the British police, is, which is that there had been a series, a long series, of intruders breaking into homes, many of them homes where British families were living, or into apartments, uh, an intruder breaking in, a lone intruder, and getting into bed with little girls, or onto the bed with little girls. In one account that we had some detail on was very haunting. A, a man who came in and was wearing, um, the older sister of the little girl, remember, was wearing a, a medical mask um, uh, over his over his face, presumably to to cover his 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 his, his face. 
and and also had um, cloths wrapped around his feet, presumably, one guesses, because uh, it's a bizarre thing to do, not to leave shoe prints on the ground that could identify him. In many cases, the, the man came in and didn't do anything, um, and in some cases he came in and there was an actual sexual assault. But there had been 28, uh, the last count that we've seen, 28 such incidents within 40 miles of the town where Madeline disappeared prior to Luz. That's an extraordinary incident. Imagine that within 40 miles of Duncarbon there had been 28 incidents of a man creeping into little girls' bedrooms. That suggests, it, it's not proof of anything, but it suggests that one should be looking for a paedophile and a paedophile incident in which may have gone tragically wrong. Robin, um, a number of people have been texting in about um, sedation, and uh, is there any evidence to suggest that Madeline may have been sedated? So, for example, the parents were having meals or drinks mm. just slightly away, and that this may have been part of it. Any evidence to suggest that? There is no evidence to suggest that. The parents um, attested, and all that was ever found in their apartment was that they, on occasion, gave their children cowpaw. Um, and that has been blown out in the press as a sedative. Uh, I think most Irish parents listening to this would know that that is something you give a child for fever. Um, it can help them rest if they are feverish, but all the mums I know, when my children were little, if they wanted their child to sleep, they went out and bought that large bottle of Dozol, which used to be on the counters back, back in those days, which is full of alcohol and thus does put children to sleep. There was nothing like that in the McCann's um, apartment nor were there things like syringes or any of the other things that have been reported. There is an oddity that has been discussed, which is that, um, and it's important, um, Kate McCann herself alerted the police to what she thought was an odd stain that she couldn't recognize on Madeline's t-shirt the day before she went missing um, and wondered later, had someone tried, what was it? Had someone tried to give her a medicine that night? Um, the little twins slept incredibly soundly through all the commotion um, that took place in that apartment that night. Now again, it is hard to know. I think as parents we've all seen our little children sleep in a way that we found unimaginable, but it, it was an oddity. Anthony did some very in-depth research on the whole idea of sedation and perhaps he wants to speak to that, um, that, that there when we looked at it closely, there were very few things that could have successfully sedated a child in, in such a way. Well, one of the things, strangely enough, is that old Sherlock Holmes uh, angle of using chloroform. Chloroform can be quite dangerous to use. I mean, you can kill somebody using too much chloroform. Um, but Robbins mentioned that the two little nippers, the, the babies, went on sleeping till four o'clock in the morning when, when finally people tried to get a little sleep for an hour or so. And they were moved to another, the babies were moved to another apartment and they still didn't wake after all the police coming and going and so on. So there is some hint that maybe a drug had been involved or whichever one it was. And that's where one has to start concentrating on the idea that maybe Madeline had been targeted and that this was a deliberate kidnapping, not an intent to kill, but an intent to take her away. Um, I know of no evidence that substantiates that, but with all the, the vague circumstances involved, it becomes a real possibility. Um, we're nearly at the top of the hour at 11 o'clock. Uh, Robin, what happened to Madeline? And is she alive now? In one minute, please. Sadly, we don't know exactly what happened to Madeline. What do you think? The jury remains out. I don't want to go there because I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know, and I've looked at this case so closely. Like you've studied there is, this. There, there is a strong, you know, the, there, there's strong witness testimony that suggests that perhaps she was targeted and perhaps was taken. There is a possibility she wandered. But I think that the bottom line here is... Do you there, think she's still alive? It is a possibility. I read a, of a case yesterday of from the 1800s 
in which a child was taken and was found 60 years later. Um, we, there are instances, and we know statistically, 56% of children who are abducted are returned alive. The length of time plays against that in this case, but no one has a right to take away the parents' hope. And there is an ongoing police investigation in two jurisdictions which has cleared those parents of any wrongdoing in, in, in the disappearance of their daughter. And while this case is open, other children potentially remain in danger. Anthony, in your opinion, what happened to Madeline and is she still alive? I share the same view, not surprisingly, as, as, as Robin's. She would now be 16, this, this girl. And there, there are records just as, as recently, I know, from South Africa, for example, in 2015, when a little girl who'd been missing um, for almost 20 years w was found alive. Robin has it right. For the parents, of course, and for everyone else, the important thing is not to give up, not to give up hope. There's always the possibility that she will emerge. And on that note, we will end this discussion. We'll be back with your comments and um, thoughts on this matter and other items shortly after this.